Welcome in TNC Radio Live. We are live on a Wednesday night, May the thirty first, twenty twenty three. You're listening to Keep On Talking, and now here are your hosts, Tom Kirk and Christine Gray. Thank you very much, Tom Kelly. It's great to be with you each and every night as we gather here around the virtual counter of knowledge. You know, since it's a much harder at the truck stops now to find the driver's tables or counter of knowledges where we can sit down and share things, uh, <laughs> ideas and thoughts, we do that now each year, each and every week on TNC Radio Live. And if you want to be part of the conversation, 706-862-8620. That's 706 tnc CTNC0. We've got a great topic, I think, tonight. Uh, some of you may have seen this. Uh, topic's actually been in the news off and on since about 2018. But the Patterson High School has a CDL program for their students, as well as an adult education program to help people get their CDL. So we're going to talk a little bit about 18-year-olds in the trucking industry. Is it a good idea? Or is it a bad idea? And if it is a good idea, what are maybe the right ways to do it? But before we do that, I need to ask how my wonderful co-host, a beautiful and talented Miss Christine Gray is doing tonight. Absolutely. Absolutely. So how is, uh, how's everybody doing tonight? It's an awesome topic. Well, I'm doing pretty good, and then and I, I'm going to speak for everybody else here real quick who's talking off air. They're doing well as well, so I, I think we're going to get into this, and I'm going to toss it off to you for a second, Christine, because you've been a driver trainer. You've been involved in a bunch of different things, and, and you're working with some safety and training programs now. What are your thoughts? Should 18, Let's just start off with a simple question. We'll kind of go to everybody. Should 18-year-olds be driving a big rig? Let's just start off real simple. Okay, so you know what? That's a really great question, I think, because it pertains to when is training, when are are you a valid driver, right? When are you a beginning driver? We all start somewhere. Now, the thing about taking a fresh student, which is what, you know, I had real problems when I first started training, taking guys straight out of, you know, adults, straight out of college, And then we came across this October 16th of 2021 about a high school, you know, in California that has truck driver training. Um, I think that if you take them young enough and you can give them the right skills, they'll be better drivers overall in the future. Because we actually integrate what we do while we're driving a truck into our, our own vehicles, you know, in a four-wheeler. So I think that the benefit definitely outweighs the negatives if it's done right. And and I think like so many things in trucking, that's the key if it's done right. And we're as we go through the show, we're going to cover more about Patterson High School in California. Uh, I'm not going to say they were the first high school to do this, but they're the one who's maybe developed perhaps one of the best programs out there, if not the best. And it serves as a model for a lot of other schools and arguably maybe even for some adult programs as well. And I've got kind of a specific order. I'm, I'm going to do things in here tonight when I first go to people here. Um, Dutch, I'm going to go to you next. Do you think 18 year olds uh, should be driving truck? Depends on where they're driving. Depends if it's, if they start locally, I think you go for it because I mean, then they're going to learn by the time they're like 18, 19, like 20, let's say 21. Then, yeah, they can go up over the roof. But my thing is okay, let's say, for instance, getting your license in, in the United States, 16. But if you go across the ocean to where my family's from, 18, it to be to get your regular license. I never understood why that was, but now I do because they think people are better and apt to be driving on the roads at 18 than they are at 16, which my parents, I got my license at 16. I wait, they took my license away. They would not let me drive unless I was driving to work with them or they were with me or whatever. But until I was 18, then they gave my license back. So in hindsight, yes, they might be pretty 
good at driving at 18, but are there things that they still need to learn? Yes. Are there things that they need to, I don't know. I mean, there's certain situations that I don't think they'll be able to, what's the word I'm looking for? To actually, Uh, Handle, is that the word you're thinking of? Handle, not really handle, but like, okay, for instance, a sudden breaking situation, are they going to be able to know, okay, where do I go? Do I just slam it to the people in front of me, or do I go to the left, to the right? Yeah, that does take training, but also takes being out in the world. Um, Exactly, common sense. Exactly. Are they going to have that when they're at the age of 18? Well, I, I think we can, yes. But, but I also but think we most, can argue no. on that, that one, Dutch, that there's a lot of adults that it's arguable. Oh, yeah. I mean, particularly on my morning commute lately, it, it really seems like the last couple of weeks running up 295 here um, towards New Jersey, there's a certain stretch of road. I swear over the last two weeks, I, I'm I'm looking actively to see Dale Earnhardt Sr., Mario Andretti, um, Richard and Kyle Petty all come and flying up the road racing. And then I realize it's morning rush hour. Um, I, and it's not even rush hour. It's just the way people are driving. So I, I don't know if that's always pertains to, to just the 18 year olds or if it's more than that. Um, I'm going to go, come to Bruce here real quick. Hey, Bruce, what are your thoughts? Do you think 18 year olds should be, should be driving CDL or not? Well, they already can right now. Think about it. Get a CDL at 18 as long as you run intra state. Never leave the state. So. I think it all all depends on the individual. And and I think there's a lot of truth to that. Go ahead. Sorry. It depends on the individual because with the society now and the way the kids are growing up and their mentality, (laughs) there's still some good kids out here that would really Take a graph and do it right. Some might just look at it as a job and a paycheck, and that's not what we need out here. Someone is going to be understand the industry and do it the right way. And if you're trained the right way, then it should work out. You know? And I definitely agree with that. And there's, I don't think anything necessarily wrong with looking at it as a job, but you also have to realize if you're going to go into it and looking at it as a job, there is two ways to handle it, the right way or the wrong, wrong way. And I think it's true with almost any job. And if you're not going to take it seriously, yeah, it, it's going to be a real problem. Uh, we're kind of coming up here on a break, but r- fairly quick uh, there, Granny. What are your thoughts I started driving at 16, um, like construction equipment. I got my CDL at 18 and went over the road. Now, there's a lot of people that argue females are more mentally prepared and more mature at 18 than men. Now, I don't necessarily agree with that. Even though I started at 18, there are some young men who may be raised around trucks that are way more well-versed in the industry than I was. I was ignorant and I survived somehow and didn't kill anybody somehow. I I think what Christine said is what's spot on. Um, when you as a trainer for 30 years myself I would much rather take somebody fresh out of school that hasn't developed those bad habits in a truck that you know hasn't tried to train with three other companies and then comes to me and maybe a younger person they're a lot more pliable if that makes any sense, they don't, they haven't developed those horrific bad habits yet. And I think with the proper training and the proper program, long-term training, not like when I went three days of school, 
that was horrific. Now, I mean, that's scary. So I, I think that the proper training, and also it depends on each individual. We can't lump every 18-year-old into one group. They're all different. There should be strict guidelines as to who they accept into these programs and who they don't. And I think there's a lot of good points there, but we've, we're coming up here on a break. Uh, when we come back, um, I want to uh, talk to Chris, who just joined us, but I also want to talk to Jerry Fritz, who's got, I know has got some opinions on this, but there's some is- interesting issues that have been ra- raised here during our first segment that I really want to kind of dive into. And these are actually a lot of things that I have been thinking of. So we're going to be more with should 18-year-olds be driving truck? Is it a good or bad idea? And what's the right way to do it? And which leads really at the end of the day to at the end of the day, how do we train our CDL drivers, which I think just raises up so many other questions in the industry. So we'll be back with more after this, 706-862-8620. We still got room for you. Keep your ears on. We'll be right back after this. Ready for the power of positive and something that will put you back to a time you wanted to last forever? Music is the ultimate time machine. What was your favorite time? Do you want to go back there? LTD Radio features the songs of the 70s, 80s, and 90s that will transport you to a happier time. It'll make you smile and brighten your day. We could all use that about now. TNCRadio.live is proud to carry the great music of LTD Radio. This info blog on TNCRadio.live is brought to you by the Truckers Network at app.thetruckersnetwork.net. Spring is near. Cleaning tips for truck drivers. Spring's right around the corner. That means saying goodbye to the cold winter weather and hello to the warm sunshine. For many people, it's time to start spring cleaning at their house. For truckers, this could mean cleaning up their truck. It's not uncommon for truck drivers to spend more time on the road than in their house. Having a clean, organized truck can make life on the road much more enjoyable and less stressful. Here's some spring cleaning tips for truck drivers. Clean and organize. It's always a good idea to incorporate a cleaning routine into your work schedule. After all, your truck reflects who you are as a driver. A clean and well-organized truck can take a lot of stress out of your job as being a truck driver. It also makes you more prepared in the event of a DOT inspection. Take some time this spring to clean out and organize your truck. Throw away the trash. Donate or get rid of things that are not a part of your daily use. Go through your paperwork and organize it. Finally, wipe down the inside of your truck. Get a wet cloth and wipe down your dash, air vents, and other areas you feel need cleaning. After you wipe everything down, pull out your vacuum and start vacuuming the carpet's floor mats and vents. Wash and wax. The winter months can be hard on the exterior of a truck. All the snow and de-icing salts can make your truck look pretty rough. Start washing your truck from the top and work your way down. Use microfiber cloths to clean your windows and windshields. Maintenance. Failing to stay up to date on your truck's maintenance means you're less likely to spot a problem before it occurs. This can end up costing you a lot of money and time off from work. Not only do you save money and time by regularly performing maintenance on your truck, but you're also more likely to pass a roadside inspection. The spring season is a great time to perform a maintenance check on your truck. Check fluid levels and make sure your lights and windshield wipers are working. Snow and ice take a toll on brakes and tires. The transition from cold to warm weather can affect your tire pressure. Check your brakes and make sure they're not worn out. Be sure to check out the blog, Six Easy Steps for Keeping Your Semi-Truck Interior Clean, from the Truckers Network at app.thetruckersnetwork.net. TNCRadio.live, your commercial driver navigation station. And welcome back in TNCRadio.live. This is Keep On Talking. You're your host, Tom and Christine. Hey, thank you very much, Tom. It is good to be back, Christine. I'm actually going to throw it over to you for your first second. Um, I mean, we've had some interesting things brought up here. I mean, what are your some of your thoughts that has been brought up here as we're talking about 18-year-olds? Uh, I know you've been done some training. How old were you when you first started driving in the industry? I don't remember that. I know you've been training for a long time. 
I was 26. I was 20, 26 when I got my license and I started driving or training. I don't know. Uh, train my first driver. I want to say in 06. And then, you know, I didn't, as an owner operator, I had to train them to drive my truck. But otherwise, after that, I didn't start training full time until now, which was about seven years ago now. And I mean, I was with this company for like three months before I was told, hey, we, you know, we need you to train. So I was really adamant about getting in and handing my life over to a driver fresh with a CDL. I mean, we all, we all start somewhere, don't get me wrong, but starting on my own and starting with, you know, someone else in control of my life, that takes a lot of courage, if that's the right word, to let go. A lot of uh, who you are as a human being to let go of that and put your hands in someone else. But again, you know, I have a specific frame I built that they use now. So... I think that I, I want to see, I'd like to see more of them. And, you know, somebody said, you know, 18 year olds don't have the, uh, uh, I think Granny said something about 18 year olds, you know, being young and, and the choices that we make um, at 18. For me, I want you to think about those, you know, for, for me, when I turn around, and I look at an 18 year old who wants to get behind the wheel of the truck, even though like, like, you know, Tom had said, intrastate or interstate as a, you know, these guys go off to war and fight for my freedom. I should yeah. be able to train them. I mean, correct. Uh, yeah, I should be able to train true. them. That's so, so, true. so if I, if, if they're willing to put their lives on the line for me, I need to be able to put my life on the line for them. And I get that, but it took a long time for me to come to terms with that. So again, I got to give these teachers in these high schools props. But I, if, if you read the articles though, they are 18, 17, 18 year olds. And they graduate with that license. It's not something that's handed to them. So, yeah. Yeah. And, and, think, and the one thing I want to clarify to you on that one, Christine, the way they do it is it's more of a defensive driving program where you, they get their learner's permit. They actually mm -hmm. go to another school or not another school, but they also work with another trucking company that helps give them the experience, additional training above and beyond what they did in school. And the program that they do in school, I've looked at parts of it. It is, it, I wish more CDL schools use part, parts, if not all, of this program. It is pretty rigorous. And I think we would see a better grade of student coming out if they did this. But it, it's one of these things is, and, and also I think they have to be at least 18, if not 19, before they can get it. So, so like I said, the high school has taken a lot of steps in here to try to do this the right way to make sure this, the kids are getting the mentorship and the training and they bring in professional drivers from various comp com companies to talk to them, kind of maybe give a little bit of mentorship. So they realize how, how serious at the end of this day it is. And to kind of go along with what you're saying, we've been saying, all right, the interest state's fine. Okay. Well, let's look at basically, um, and I'm going to get my states wrong here for minutes, but basically, um, if you look at quite a few of the, the East Coast states, I think it's South Carolina up to New Jersey, and I may have my, my states wrong there. That's roughly 704 miles. Um, if you look at Texas, north to south on highway miles, that's about 801. Mm -hmm. Okay. Texas is a great big, huge state. You can put how many of our other states inside of it. I mean, the joke is Rhode Island. If you're an interstate driver, you drive 20 minutes and you look for a place to turn around. All right, maybe not literally, but in terms of experience, or if you look at California, you've got all these different weather conditions, road types, elevation changes, and you can sometimes do that in one day. So I don't think saying intrastate versus interstate is fair in the way it maybe was a bunch of years ago. Uh, I don't necessarily think that applies. But we've got a couple new people who have joined that I definitely want to get to and one who's been here for a little bit. Uh, Chris, I'm going to come to you first. So what are your thoughts? Do you think it's a good or bad idea for 18-year-olds to get a CDL and be driving on the road? Well, I don't think it's a bad idea under the right circumstances. And I would consider the right circumstance to be uh, just in an ideal world if they completed like one year of a BOAG program. So maybe they're slopping chickens or slopping hogs or something like that. Like 
they see blood, they see death, and I think that would kind of get their minds in the uh, idea of thinking, hey, you know, there are consequences to bad decisions, and they might be thinking that while they're slapping hogs or chickens, you know, and maybe they're operating a skid steer, or, you know, there's a whole bunch of different things that have dire consequences for stupid decisions in a VOAG program. And that line of thinking, I think, would transfer beautifully to over-the-road driving. I really do. Um, I think there's some very valid points there. I think the pro- – pro- and let me go back a little bit here. When we're talking about this pro- CDL program at the Patterson High School out in California, let's clarify a little bit. It's a logistics program. So they're doing more than just CDL training, though that is a big part of for both high school students as well as adults who can take night classes for their program there. Um they also are teaching other areas of logistics, warehousing, and some of the other skills. So it's not just a truck driving program. It's a more comprehensive program. But one of the other things that they do there that I also think is important is they're using some of these, um, and you're seeing more high schools and various other places now. They're glasses that they put on you. They can put you in a golf cart and have you drive this course. But it basically makes it like you're drunk or shows what distracted driving would be like if he's trying to use your cell phone and other things. So they can simulate in a way that's a little more meaningful. Hey, if you get drunk or you do this, these are what consequences could be. But then they have these students go ahead and read some letters from families that have been impacted by this. So hopefully it does exactly what you're saying, and Chris, and it's maybe a different approach than what you're talking about, but I know one of the things for me, when I was in defense of driving in high school, they had one of our state troopers come in and talk about some of these accidents and showed some pretty graphic pictures that to this day, I'm kind of going, you know, I really don't want to be that person. So I think there is some great ways to handle some of that stuff. Uh, Jerry, I wanted to come to you on this one. Um, you're one of those ones who started driving at an early age. So I think you're a very fair person to ask, do you think 18 year olds should be driving truck? Uh, I'd like to say generally, yes. In fact, I want to put this out here real quick. The sooner we can get them behind a wheel under the right structure and supervision, provided they're qualified, they will more quickly become a more skilled driver than a 45-year-old coming new in the business has been driving a car for 30 years, like Christine said. They get their habits, and they aren't going to break them. So if we could get them 17, 18 years old, almost have them behind the wheel of a truck before they get behind the wheel of a car. I did. In fact, I was brought home from the hospital. As a newborn baby in 1946, my dad's cattle truck. See farm machinery all life. Let me, here's something else I think we're missing out on. These programs, I'm just thinking, they should be like uh, uh, when you go into these skills. In other words, you become the bottom rung of the skill of a, of a certain, um, uh, I can't think of the name of them. But anyway, what I, what I want to get at here, is the carriers who they would have the opportunity to maybe hire on to and to develop more, the carriers need to be qualified. And almost all this truck driver training school garbage, the carrier is the real problem. A carrier should have to apply and qualify. The first thing it should be looked at, what is your turnover rate at your employer? Now, if you've got an employer with 100% turnover rate per year, you don't want to know somebody new. What is your safety ratings and things like that? And the carrier should have to reapply for that annually, too. So all these things are looked at before you put a, 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 a person that would make a great driver, and you're just carrying her over here, is going to use him and abuse him, screw him, send him on down the road. And, now we've lost everything. And I'm going to jump in here real quick because we're coming up on a break, Jerry. First of all, if you want to participate in this conversation, we still have room for you, 706-862-8620. We're talking about 18-year-olds, and is it a good idea for them behind behind the wheel? And we're going to be going diving a little bit more into this 
uh, Patterson High School logistics program on truck driving uh, here. And, and I think on some other great issues that Jerry just raised about turnover and training. One more question, Jerry, that I think needs to be asked is how many years of driving does your trainers have before their own star training. And I, I think that's another important question. But we're going to be getting more into some of those details here after the break. Stay tuned. We'll be right back after this. Keep your ears on. I'm Shelley Johnson with Kathy Takaro. You can hear us Tuesdays on TNCRadio.live at 8 p.m. Eastern on Women Road Warriors. And don't miss Steve Summers' Overnight Drive right here on TNCRadio.live. Weeknights, midnight to 5 a.m. Eastern. Brought to you by Hot Shot Secret. Hi, I'm Dr. Christopher Cortman. And now for the Mental Health Minute. I was asked this week to speak to a group on bullying. And this is a group of kids from a lower socioeconomic status part of town. And I want to ask them, what is bullying? Where does bullying come from? How does it happen? Do you bully? Do you get bullied? How does this work? Well, we have a lot of research on bullying by now. And one of the things we understand is that people who are bullied often bully themselves. And we know that the bully gets hurt, according to research, and so does the one who's bullied, and so do the bystanders. Everyone who witnesses a bullying event ends up paying a price for it. So if you hang around me, you hear that behavior is purposeful. Everything we do, we get something from or we wouldn't do it. So why do people bully? Well, it's simple. Very often we bully because we don't feel good about self. And we feel that by putting somebody else down, it helps to elevate ourselves. It makes me feel better about me by subjugating somebody else. So what do we do with that? As soon as we understand that a child has issues with that, we want to interfere, we want to intercede, because we understand that they have some deep-rooted issues or they don't feel good about self. And we want to help them to promote self in other ways. According to the great psychologist, Dr. Sid Simon, when a person likes themselves, two things are true. Number one, they don't do things to hurt themselves. And number two, they don't do things to hurt other people. This is TNC Radio Live. And welcome back here to TNC Radio Live. This is Keep On Talking. Now here's your host, Christine Gray. Thanks, Tom. Appreciate that. So <clears throat> we are discussing 18-year-olds uh, behind the wheel, uh, getting their, going to school, getting their license, uh, all the above. How do you feel about it? Where are we in an industry? Is it is it helping an industry? Is it going to uh, impact us worse than where we're already sitting? Um, I understand the concept behind uh, you know putting bodies in seats, but uh, Jerry was making some very good points back there. If uh, you'd like to get back into it, Jerry, you would appreciate it. Oh, yeah. Uh, also, I'd like to bring up about the uh, logistics. That's got me excited. That's in a way, you know, Tom, people say, well, Jerry knows a lot of stuff. Well, it's learn a lot of stuff, but experience. I actually did this. Out of high school, I started Fraley Dickinson University studying transportation management law. At the same time, I went to work in a warehouse where somehow I ended up taking over the shipping in the warehouse operation. So eventually, I go on the road as tractor trailer driver full time. But that brought a broad perspective into my world and gave me good depth too. 
that I would say 90% of drivers, unfortunately, didn't get to experience. I can see inside the warehouse. I can see inside the ship operation. I fully understand, well, mostly fully understand, a lot more transportation law and even DOT rules as a result of that broad experience, which you would call logistics today. Jerry, do you, do you think that logistics have changed from, you know, 30, 40 years ago to today, as far as logistics management goes and trying to put bodies in seats, you know, it's a lot different than what it used to be. You know, you're trying to put bodies in seats or you're actually trying to benefit the industry. I'll say that again. I said, are you, are, today, compared to 40 years ago, are they trying to benefit the industry or just put bodies in seats? Well, I think the trucking industry is just trying to grab bodies and feet, put them behind a wheel. Uh, logistics is so broad in its definition. It's still basically shipping and receiving but there's more of a system to it now. Now you can see how the more interconnection, what hooks on here, the total supply chain. Now that comes down to inventory management, risk management, internal flow, external flow. And actually, I didn't even know I was learning at that time, but I was. And see, in addition to that, I had the college experience of transportation management and business. So I knew how to go into you know, uh, uh, I even understood, I didn't know in the beginning, how you routed freight and why you routed freight. A lot of people didn't know that about ICC law. I didn't. Right. But, but somehow or other, and that, and that circle there gave me the ability to bring much more perspective into the business, which is good for the shipper, the receiver, and the carriers, and the drivers, if they all want to kind of coordinate it. But in a way, they don't because they, each one of those groups, at least the business groups, like a lot of like a lot of uh, carriers or drivers will say, well, why don't the shippers do this and do this? It's, Wait a minute. Do you realize that that traffic manager over there just had to pull the freight rate down to a dollar twenty a mile? It's fundamentally just keeping this job because he has a competitor that just got the freight rate down to a dollar ten a mile. Right. So the boss, the CEO, comes in one day and says, "Hey, how come we're paying a dollar twenty a mile for freight?" And that guy down the road, I just had lunch with, is only paying a dollar ten. So I said to him, "Well, I want to keep the drivers comfortable. <laughs> Get out my door. You're you're here to work for me. You're here to lower my cost as much as possible, so the guy down the street doesn't put me out of put me out of business." Right. But even Absolutely. Though I'm just picking on truck drivers. Yeah. But one of the things I want to jump in here real quick, because since I moved into the office, I'm having a maybe, and I agree with you on so many things, Jerry, that it is a race to the bottom of the bottom line. But what I'm starting to see and realize that some companies and conversations, what's starting to matter is service. And what I mean by service is they want drivers that are going to be on time, going to be polite, going to be well-dressed, going to treat the customers decently, et cetera. And if you want to get that employee, you're going to have to either pay more, offer better working conditions, better home time, or gas, all of the above. Um, And I think the wiser companies are starting to realize that, which actually brings up some kind of um, interesting statistics here real quick, is when we look at um, the average age of truck drivers right now, uh, OTR drivers is roughly 46 years old compared to 42 for all occupations. The average age of private fleet drivers are 57. So the drivers that drive for a lot of these more elite companies, whether it's your Purdue's, your Walmart's, your um, or, or some of your smaller specialty carriers, their their average age is 57, and in some cases maybe even a little higher. Um, and the drivers who are in training to become full-blown CDL drivers um, are 35. And, and here's where I think as an, as an industry average. And here's one of the things that I think is interesting that we have a problem with. We keep, keep hearing people use the term entry-level driving. And one of the things I've realized is 
that doesn't mean the same thing to everybody. You talk to one set of groups, entry level training to them means the process to get their CDL. That's entry level training. Then they start their job someplace. And us as drivers realize there's additional training once they get their CDL. So when we're talking entry level training, I've had a tendency over the years to mean that as, wait a second, that's the training. You have your CDL, you get your first trucking job or you're put it with a trainer, you're getting additional training. To me, that's entry level training. And when you're talking to the politicians, the legislators, the regulators, entry level training to them is getting that CDL. So that's one of our biggest problems is nobody is consistent across the board with how this terminology is used. So I think that's one of the reasons why we as drivers get a little frustrated. Um, Bruce, we haven't heard from you in a few minutes. I'm going to kind of come to you here. You know, what are your thoughts? Do you think one of these problems here is, you know, obviously we got turnover, the, the, all the other issues that have been brought up, but do you think maybe part of the problem is there is confusion as to what is entry level training? Well, there's there's just no, uh, you know, there, there, there's no universal definition. That's for sure. And the, and the other thing is, there's no boxes to check to make sure that people know that you know, make sure that they know this, they know that, they know the other thing, like you know, how to do the the pin or, or how's that go lap and pal on disconnecting and, and connecting trailers. You know, pin, airline, landing gear, landing gear, airline pin, you know, that that type of thing, um, which is incredibly important. And uh, and then you get into the finer points of being able to control all your macros and time management, because if you don't have a good sense of time management, you're not going to make any money out there. And if you're not making money, you're going to get depressed. And if you get depressed, it's like that commercial that you've seen on TV where it's, it's a it's a domino effect, you know. Yep. of bad things that happen. Well, w- one of the things I'm going to jump in there real quick before we go back to Bruce there, Chris, is with the new entry-level dry- driver training program or motor, the, the um, Office of Motor Carriers Model Curriculum, w- whatever term you want to use to that or the guidelines from the Professional Truck Driving Institute, these entry-level training or CDL obtaining programs are now supposed to be more or less structured with how they do the classroom, with how they do the labs and all this other stuff. And theoretically, there is supposed to be a checklist where everything is being done, if not the exact same way, very similarly across the board. And you have to basically, as a school, get accredited to do this. Hey, Bruce, we've got just a minute or so here before a break. I want to give you a shot. What are some of your thoughts on this? If you look at it, and they got a they got a crackdown on the training companies. I'm not mentioning any names, but I think we all know you can't put three trainers, three trainees in one truck with one trainer. Yep. Yeah. Or it even two trainers. Exactly, even two. My opinion on training is the truck can run for 14 hours straight, okay? That would be like a super solo. But the driver is on the trainer is only going to drive three hours if he has to, to complete a run. The other time, he's going to be sitting in the jump seat. And the truck will never run as a full team. That's the only way it's going to work. One on one and like that. And what I'm even going to take it a step further here. I'm going to say for the first one to two weeks that that once they have their CDL and they're with their first trainer at a training company, I'm going to say for that first week to two week, I'm going to say the truck shouldn't be doing more than five to 600 miles a day because that's going to give the trainer more time. Because if that trainer is trying to make some of these loads work and things like that, you know, as a super single, they're not getting the rest that they need at times or focusing on the trainee the way they should, because they might be cat mapping or things like that. So in my opinion, that first one to two weeks, 
let's cap it off at let's say you know 10 hours of driving a day so they have plenty of time to find parking if they do have to maybe go a little closer to that 11 you know let's say it's 600 miles a day maximum you know is that going to be popular with some people and some companies no but i'm going to throw out one even more controversial idea if you're a training company, you cannot own or be directly involved in a CDL school. Oh, I just threw gasoline on the fire. But with that, we've got to take a short break before we come to the top of the hour. We'll be back with more right after this. Keep your ears on. Ready for a music break? Did you know that you can use the TNC Radio Live app to hear the best in traditional country? Traditional country, you know, the good stuff from the 50s and 60s and on. Traditional country is more than a time period. It's a style and approach to music that we cherish. We have an incredible collection of songs that define country music and also sprinkle in some Western music, you know, cowboy music, bluegrass, Americana, and country gospel. Our TRUSA president and country Western music icon, Rex Allen Jr., also hosts an hour of music and memories. At TRUSA, we have a heart for the road and the heritage of country music. Wherever you roam, we hope you'll take us with you. Enjoy the ride on Truckers Radio USA. To listen to TRUSA Radio on the TNC Radio.live app, just click on the music button and then TRUSA. This blog is brought to you by the Truckers Network at app.thetruckersnetwork.net. The dark side of the long-haul trucker lifestyle. A trucker's lifestyle can be a gloomy place at times. Long days, stressful work environments, and loneliness have major effects on a driver's life. The dark side of the long-haul trucker's lifestyle is often overlooked and not addressed. As a result, many drivers suffer from mental and physical health problems. Before entering the trucking industry, long-haul truck drivers need to be aware of the good and bad that comes with this lifestyle. It's difficult to stay healthy. Being in good health is a rare thing for long-haul truck drivers. Life on the road doesn't give drivers many opportunities to live a healthy lifestyle. When you spend the majority of your trucking career on the go, your food options are limited. Although taking an exit to get McDonald's may seem like an easy solution or the easiest option, eating fast food for every meal for weeks at a time can cause serious health issues. Obesity is one of the most common health issues in truckers. If you don't watch your diet and exercise, you could end up developing a serious health problem. Say goodbye to a regular sleep schedule. The trucking industry runs 24-7, 365, so having a regular sleep schedule is rare for long-haul drivers. The loading and unloading times are often never the same. At times, the driver will deliver a load at 2 a.m. one day and 1 p.m. the next day. In addition to the inconsistent load times, drivers can make multiple deliveries a day. This creates a lot of stress on the body and leaves the driver operating on a few hours of sleep. If you're struggling with getting enough sleep and staying awake on the road, check out our blog, Five Easy Steps to Help Truckers Stay Awake While Driving. You'll feel lonely. It's not uncommon for long-haul truck drivers to feel lonely while on the road. Drivers have very little face-to-face -face interactions while working on the road. While this may seem like a good thing for some drivers, it can start to develop depressive symptoms. Depression is a common side effect of trucking. To help avoid feeling depressed on the road, talk to your friends and family on the phone at least once a day. As a long-haul truck driver, you can often feel like you're missing out on your loved one's life. Communicating with them daily will help you feel less lonely. It's hard on your relationships. Long-haul trucking can strain your relationship with your significant other. Being away from your loved one for weeks at a time is never easy. In addition to being apart, many drivers struggle with balancing their work life and personal life. Relationships already take a lot of work, but long-distance relationships take even more work. When you become a long-haul truck driver, it's important to be willing to put an extra effort into your relationship. Some quick tips to having a healthy relationship as a long-haul truck driver. Communicate daily. Spend as much time together as possible when you're not working. Consider therapy. Avoid arguments. Trust each other. This blog has been brought to you by the Truckers Network at app.thetruckersnetwork.net. Catch Mind Your Trucking Business Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern with James Rogers, Jamie Irvine, and Tom Kelly. 
They provide expert advice about starting, operating, and growing a professional trucking business. It's Mind Your Trucking Business on TNC Radio. Live. Welcome back in TNC Radio. Live, bringing you Keep On Talking. And here's your host, Tom Kirk and Christine Gray. Hey, thank you very much, Tom Kelly. We're here in our final segment. And coming up after this, we've got the one and only Larry and Angie Baum with Taillights, uh, where they're going to have a great guest in this week to talk about you know stories and tales from the road uh, or various topics that are of interest to driver groups that can help serve drivers and things of that nature. And then uh, at 8 o'clock, um, Central 9 o'clock Eastern is going to be Clutch Time Sports with Anderson and Banker the only sports show geared to the professional driver. So we've got lots more great programming today, but we're talking tonight about 18-year-old drivers. Is it a good idea to have these CDL programs that are geared to them, particularly some of these high school programs? And I think so far, the consensus of everybody has been, yes, if the program's done right, if the kids are uh, monitored, disciplined, uh, you know, mentored properly, this can be a great way, you know, particularly if there are uh, the trucking companies involved are realizing that they have to take more care in dealing with these students and properly training them and mentoring them. And, you know, not they're, they're not neat in the seat. You know, let's just be blunt. Too many companies treat trainees or, or drivers in general as meat in the seat. They're just another body. They're just another employee number. And that's one of the things from looking at how they describe the program, from the comments, you know, the various people who participate in it, that the one thing that Patterson High School in California does is they try to treat the students, number one, as individuals, but they try to instill in them, hey, you're dealing with a big, heavy piece of equipment that has the potential to, to, to take lives. But the other thing that I've also noticed is they're working with a lot of smaller companies out there. I mean, some of them are fairly well known, like your Foster Farms or your J.B. Hunt, but they're also dealing with Morningstar, which is a regional company out there, Northern Refrigerated, Long Haul Trucking, Valley Farm Transport, Bronco Wine Company, among others. And some of these, as we mentioned, may be more on the logistics side than the driving side. Um, but, But the point is, I think it gets back to what Jerry was saying, they're trying to work with companies that maybe have, for the most part, have a better reputation and are going to t- take these students and realize, hey, you know, we need to treat them differently and, and work with them with where they're at uh, instead of just throwing them to this industry model of, of kind of a churn and burn, shall we say. And they also do have a, the adult program as well, which is where some of these other trucking companies may fall into so it's nice to see that it looks like they're trying to do things the right way. Do they get it perfect? Probably not. But you know what? They are trying to do things. They're also working on teaching drivers better healthy behaviors by working with programs uh, and people that are mentoring these kids and saying, hey, you got to get your exercise. You got to eat right. There's a lot of things that I think they're doing right. Uh, and that's something that I think is a lesson that can be learned there. Before the break, I mentioned that maybe what part one of the problems is if you're a tra- trucking training company, you should not own or have a business interest in a CDL school. And I know that could be a hot take for some people, but it does seem like a lot of these big companies, they have their own training program. They have their own CDL school. So is it in their interest to have this constant churn and burn through because, hey, it's more customers for their CDL school. So, um, Bruce, I'm going to kick it over to you first real quick. What what do you think? Do you think it's a good or bad idea for trucking companies to have their own CDL school? Depends. I know a couple of companies that do. Uh, they train them for what their rules and what they go by. Uh, some have, you know, you got to sign a contract. So you got to stay there for a year or two to get your, uh, intuition paid. Yep. But it, 
<laughs> and I can name names on which ones aren't that good, which ones are, and I'm not going to do that. I just know two off the top of my head that pretty much do it the right way. Well, this, this, is, this is the one thing I'm going to say. If somebody's out there listening tonight and they are interested in that, uh, if you could reach out to me at info at tncradio.live, I'll connect you to Bruce and he can give you the ones that he thinks are good programs. But keep in mind, that's his opinion. Um, you know, everybody's, you know, I, you can have, you can put five drivers in a room, you'll get seven different opinions, and at least one driver will get into a fight with himself over said opinion. Um, but, but, but in all honesty, there are some better programs that are out there. I just think as a blanket rule, if you own a CDL school and you're a training company, separate them because you now have a business interest. If, if they're, if you're constantly churning through people and there's some of these companies now that have extended their, um, contracts up, up to almost three years. So, you know, I understand prices have gone up, but this is kind of getting ridiculous. And with some of the companies, if you leave early and let's just say we're going to do a round number, let's say your training program was $10,000. Well, you're, and you're in a uh, two year contract, you leave at 22 months. Guess how much you're going to owe them, ladies and gentlemen, $10,000. They don't go right you finish your contract or you owe them every single penny. So there's so some problems there. Hey, no, you know, Chris, I'm going to come, let you come to you here real quick. What are some of your thoughts on this? Keep in mind, we don't have too long here. I got about a minute. I can let you talk. Okay. Well, how I got into the industry was through Schneider and they had a, they had an Academy at the time and the way they did it was, uh, which I think is a little more fair than, than what you described. Now, what you described doesn't surprise me a bit, you know, because people are just, companies are getting more and more greedy, but the way they did it with, when, when I was there, they told you every morning when, when your butt hits the seat for breakfast, it's a $600 day that you're going to owe Schneider 600 bucks for that day. Okay. Wow. Now, if you graduate from the program and work one year, uh, continuously full time, they waive the entire amount. That's, that's the program I got under. Now, what you're describing, and it's no surprise to me, it sounds like an indentured servitude. It really does. And that's yeah. really, really what a lot of these training programs, or, or let me rephrase that, tuition reimbursement programs or contracts as companies have become is indentured servitude. And you know what? As much as I'd like to go down that rabbit path today, flows flashing the lights telling us it's about time to get out of here. So we got to call it a quit. I, I think we've agreed that 18 year olds could be good. Um, that the interstate interstate driving separation needs to be revisited that we need to have more conversations about the reimbursement programs for uh, trucking. You know what? We've got at least three or four more shows that have come out just this basic conversation tonight that we'll be having over the next several weeks and months. So there's definitely a lot more to talk about. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, if you have an opinion, you can voice it here. But more importantly, please voice it to your congressman, to the FMCSA during comment periods or just in general. It does matter. Thank you so much for listening to TNC Radio Live and keep on talking live. For Christine Gray, Tom Kelly, and everybody else, We'll be back next week. See you on the radio.